you are going to watch a series about the brain and it's not going to be like any other you've seen before. My name is Lorenzo, I'm a researcher and I've been working on the development of the brain for the last 10 years. And the more I was studying this perfect machine, the more I started thinking of the brain as the masterpiece of a very skilled artist. And that's why I asked myself, is it possible to talk about the brain as if you were talking about a work of art? In the next five episodes, I'm going to tell you how nature has built something so complicated. And I'm going to do it in a totally unconventional way. So, be prepared for a journey. It's going to be a beautiful one. Whenever you're building something, it's better to have a plan. A plan is always a good starting point. It's a sequence of steps, a set of tasks that you must complete in a precise order to get to your goal. We ourselves are the result of a plan, and so is our brain. The more complex what you're building, the more complex the plan behind it. Think of the brain. It's one of the most complicating things in the universe, and its development cannot be simple. But if you can look through the complexity, you may realize that every big project, even this one, can start with something simple. Thousand five hundred years ago, people living on these hills applies this concept to the ladder. They build a clear example where a simple element can be the starting point of something imposing, and that element is the column. They used 36 of them to sustain a temple which withstood the passage of time until today. Simple but very effective. Now, coming to this place and saying that this temple stands just because of a bunch of columns is quite a leap. In fact, when you walk along this colonnade, you have the impression that there is definitely something more behind it. That a wise hand made everything incredibly proportionate. That each part is in perfect equilibrium with the others. And that's because when ancient Greeks were building their temples, they were always in search of perfection, which was the harmony between components. It was a kind of a endless hunt for the perfect balance between the full and the empty spaces, the horizontal and the vertical elements. In a temple of this kind, the column is the starting element. Imagine being the architect in charge of building this. You will first decide how wide the column should be, and then you would use this measure to calculate all the other elements of the building. For example, the height of the column has to be five times its width. The architrave with the frieze are one third of the column. The project of this temple is all a matter of proportions, calculated on a single starting simple element. And the brain? Well, the brain is not that different. The brain is that special part of your body that makes you move, think, feel, in one word makes you live. It's a very complex organ, it's made of billions of cells with many different structures, all pleated going in and out in convoluted shapes. The project behind this thing is not a simple one. But if we could go over the complexity, if we could travel back at the beginning of its development, if we could read the first lines of its project, we would realize that even this masterpiece, natural masterpiece, starts with a simple element, with a sort of brain column that nature uses to start constructing the brain. And that simple element is the stem cell. Brain development starts quite early, three weeks after conception. At the beginning, the brain is nothing more than a single colonnade of very special cells. It's a colonnade of stem cells. Now, if this is the starting point, how do we go from this to that? 
Well, one thing is clear, to go from a simple colonnade of few stem cells to an organ like this one, which is made of billions of cells, the first thing that needs to happen is a massive increase in the number of cells. This is possible because the columns of the brain have a special power. They can make copies of themselves. One cell can split symmetrically into two new identical cells, and each of them can divide even more and more and more and more. Three weeks after conception, stem cells start dividing symmetrically at an impressive rate. The colony expands, the brain gets bigger, but is this enough to make a brain that can work? The brain controls our body. It allows us to move, to think, to feel. We need more than a long colony of self-replicating stem cells to do so. We need cells that are able to do specific jobs, and not of a single type. We need dozens of different kinds of cells that work together. So where are these specialized cells coming from then? Six weeks after conception, stem cells change the way they divide. Instead of producing two identical cells, they split asymmetrically into one stem cell and one specialized cell that start doing its job in the brain, but, and that's very important, it cannot divide anymore. And these are the two special powers that make a stem cell a very cool cell. It can make copies of itself and it can differentiate into other type of cells. Let's take one of them. Imagine following its story, its lineage, keeping track of every single division. It has two options to choose from. To divide symmetrically into two new stem cells or to divide asymmetrically into a stem cell still able to divide and a differentiated cell that stops dividing. Which one to pick? That's the critical choice, a choice on which the construction of the brain is based. To properly build the brain, you need the right balance between one type of division and the other. You need to produce the right amount of each type of cells. Not too many, not too little, just the right amount. And that's the harmony you need for this masterpiece.